Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The 100 Season 7 Episode 8 Anaconda. Now this is perhaps one of the most important episodes this season, at least to some extent, revealing where Bill and the Disciples went and where the Grounders came from, along with the full story of what happened to Becca. First I want to start by just mentioning this. They likely believe Clark is the key since we see from Levitt that they got to the end of season 3 in Octavia's memories, as he mentioned that Pike was killed. So they could know Clark took the flame, but not that she took it out. She also didn't get the memories from the past commanders, but Maddie does. Therefore, Maddie is likely the actual key, as she has seen Becca getting burned and still has many memories from what we can see through her drawings, which I will mention a little later on, as her drawings could be significantly important to Kelly. Anyway, into this episode, we start where we left off, with Cadigan entering the room and also recognising Tredisling, as Kelly made up the language when she was a child, and as we see will be the one to pass it down to what will become the Grounders. We also learn that Clark herself isn't the key, the flame is, and since the flame is destroyed, only those who have had it may still hold parts of its information, but primarily Maddie does. Although last season we also saw Ellie 2.0 while in the mind drive of Clark's head, so there may still be something left over in Clark's mind as well. We get a flashback to Kelly minutes before the apocalypse, with her mother and turns out anaconda is a code word meaning that the missiles are in the air. We also see on TV that the world is very much in turmoil with a Russian virus and riots going on. Also learning that Becca has disappeared and is likely on her space station, which finally the news got something right. Kelly and her mother left the second dawn but returned to the bunker before the missiles hit, with Kelly being the renegade child and her brother Reese being the good little boy who follows orders, even when he's against them. I actually really liked Kelly as a character and really hated Reese, which is definitely purposeful, and if the prequel does go forward, I look forward to seeing more of both of them. If the prequel does go ahead though, I look forward to learning about the formation of what would become the crews and the grounders themselves, with the assumption obviously being that the group of disciples that split off from Second Dawn would become Tree Crew, as that was the protest group that Kelly and August, I believe his name was, were a part of. Cadigan also has the Anomaly Stone in the bunker. It also turns out the stone was found in Peru, specifically near Machu Picchu, which makes a lot of sense Machu Picchu is somewhat an unknown destination, nobody really knows for sure what it was built for, so in this world at least, it was built for the purpose of holding the stone, and the codes to the stone, which they're still working on trying random combinations. We skip forward to two years later, with Becca returning to Earth being able to hear the stone, although Bill won't allow her to alter the blood of those in the bunker, instead turning to the stone for answers. Becca ends up activating something on the stone which looks extremely like Maddie's drawing last episode, the blinding white light likely being either Becca's or Kelly's memory. Becca returns saying she saw Judgment Day, with Bill's ignorance leading him to locking her up and getting Reese to burn her at the stake so he can get the flame. Although many of those in the bunker, including Kelly, take the flame and the nightblood with Becca giving Kelly the phrase to activate it, and escape to the surface in pursuit of other people. Bill then locks Kelly's mother in the hatch. We don't know if she died or not, I'm assuming she left with the suit and chased after Kelly. Whether or not she got there though, and got the nightblood, who knows. We also get an explanation from Becca, talking about how the flame amplifies certain things in a person, and if the wrong person is chosen, it can end very badly, which is quite significant to our good friend in Sanctum, the Dark Commander. Getting the flame may have amplified certain parts of himself that weren't all that present otherwise. We get a nice scene of Kelly and the group leaving the bunker with the song Hey Hey My My being a fantastic choice for this scene. Ending off the prequel bits, Bill leads his followers through the bridge, likely going to Bardo and being put in stasis probably not long after. 
We also see Clark lie to Bill, telling him that Kelly is in the flame, which she clearly doesn't know, and neither do we, but based on Maddie's drawings last episode, I'm going to say she is, but only Maddie would know for sure. We get a reveal of Octavia, Echo, and Dioza all being trained disciples, ending the episode. I hope this episode helps a lot of people confused about this season and what's going on. I know a lot of people are confused about certain aspects, and I hope that this episode clears up a large portion of those. But if you still have questions, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them if I can. This is the part of the episode where I will cover the promo for the next episode, so if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever, thank you for watching and I will see you in the future. If you're still here, I will now cover the promo. There isn't a massive amount to speak about, but it looks like a large portion will cover the training of those who become disciples as shown at the end of the episode. But we do get a beautiful, well not so much beautiful, more like fatalistically beautiful shot of the outside of Bardo, which has a clearly toxic atmosphere and what is left of a very large city, and what looks like almost crystallized corpses. Perhaps this is what Becca saw, or perhaps she saw something that did this. We will also return to Sanctum, where I'd say Indra is forced to make a deal with the Dark Commander to take out Nikki, or is forced to work with him and Nikki to keep everyone alive. There isn't a lot else to mention. The next episode mainly looks like it will explain a bit more about the Disciples and their culture, which, I mean, I'm not overly hyped about. Waiting for this episode was amazing, but this next one, I'm just not as excited for. But we still have half the season left, which makes me a little worried that this is where the excitement stops. But with 16 episodes, it is important to fill the ca character development in a lot. So I see why it has been put in. Anyway, everyone, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the future. Bye.